and good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hey there, hi there, ho there. Thank you for joining me. And if you're in your office or if you're in a space where you have got the room to move it, move it, let's do this. And I have to tell you, for every time I think, well, is anybody really watching these? Is it making a difference? Thank you for the text. Thank you for the messages. Thank you for the um, Facebook messages and just the letting me know that these are working for you. And that's what makes me keep doing them. So let's move it. And let's start by shaking it out, shaking your arms out, relaxing it. When we're stressed out, we start to constrict, so we're gonna start exhaling. And nice and light. Oh, I just pumped my back already. Just gonna push a punch across your body. And you can go whatever rhythm feels comfortable for you. You wanna make sure that your shoulders are not next to your ears. They, Earrings are different than shoulders. We're gonna learn how to drop those shoulders down. Now we're gonna turn these into what's called a hook punch. Your arm is a big hook coming across your body. And if you can see, I'm rotating my body as I turn into the punch. Bam, bam. During this time, it's important to take back your power wherever you can. I personally think taking back power doing some punching and you can imagine, thank you for the messages. I've had people saying, I'm imagining I'm punching this or punching that. Great, do that. Three more, two more. Last one, next punch is called an uppercut and you're using the flat part of your hand to bring it up and you can do high uppercut. So if you were hitting someone on the chin, you can do a body uppercut. You'd be aiming right here in the gut for somebody in the gut for somebody. You'd be aiming in the gut. Boom, boom, boom. Three, two, one. Good, so we did hooks, we did uppercuts. Now I just want you to take single arms back. Breathing in as you do it. Exhaling naturally. And if you're ready, take both arms back. If you've got shoulder issues, it's typically easier to do single arms back. And single arm forward. In 2014, I had a really bad car accident, ended up with a brain injury, so I do a lot of cross body motions. Really good for neural conditioning, for brain conditioning, for functionality. Because you know what, your brain, you gotta keep it around for a long time. So cross them in front. Now, if you're feeling pretty flexible and your shoulders will let you, one of the things we do in martial arts, so we'll reach back, oh, not feeling so flexible today. And just reach those arms up now, up, and drop them down. Extend your shoulders up, and then let them come down. Extend, and up. <sighs> Inhale, exhale, breathing in, breathing out. Sounds really simple, you'd be surprised. We hold our breath when we're stressed. Good, next motion, you're gonna cross your body, and you're gonna reach across your body and rotate your hips. Tighten your abs. Your abs are the antithesis of your back. So if you've got low back problems, start tightening your abs or working on your abs. Three, two, and one. Excellent. Hip circles, warming up the hips, warming up your lower back. Inhale, exhale, switch directions. And we'll do some more stretches and uh, maybe a little, I don't know, even a lunge or two. But here's what I want you to think about next. So you're gonna take what's called a horse stance. And, and, and it is the martial artist trait for the day that they'd end up on a horse. And we're just gonna throw punches. And it's like a sumo squat. If you've ever been to an exercise class, a horse stance is a lot like a sumo squat. Eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, and one. Nice, come out of that squat. Go ahead and put your left leg forward, and we're gonna throw jab to the corner, jab to the corner. Nice and light. Bam, 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 bam. Making sure not to hyperextend your elbow. You stop the punch before it goes full extension using your muscles. 
three, two, one. If you like it, take it fast. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Nicely done. Go ahead and switch your other leg. Lead corner, 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 corner. And I've talked about making a fist before, but make sure that your thumb is always on the outside of your fist. Fastest way to break your thumb is to punch with the thumb on the inside. We're going to take it faster. If you like this speed, then keep it this speed. Otherwise, speed it up. Get a little blood flow. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And I realize I like to go fast. That's just me. Next move we're going to do is a front kick. So you're going to start with your left leg in front. Hands are up. You're just going to bring your back leg up and kick it. And kick it. And kick it. And kick it. And you're kicking your toes like you stepped in something and you're trying to get them off. Bring your knee up, it's called a chamber. Bring it back to a chamber after you kick. Good, you guys did so good at that. We're gonna hold, if you have a chair right here, up and down for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Nice, shake it off, shake it off. Other leg lead. So you should have your right leg in the lead. Back leg is gonna come up and throw that kick. And you're just gonna throw that kick, knee up, and extend from that knee. Knee up, I'm trying not to kick a chair. Knee up, knee up, knee up. And when you reset, you just leave that leg back behind you. Three, two, one. Good, if you wanna grab onto that chair, we're gonna do them fast again. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, nice. Now, to make sure your hips are nice and loose, we're doing a lot of sitting. Some of us are, I mean, I think we're probably getting more used to sheltering at the same place or safer at home, depending on where your state and where you are in the world. Knee is gonna come in and outside. Knee strikes, a very vital part of many martial arts. Krav Maga, Taekwondo, Muay Thai. Those are just the ones that I train in. Um, you wanna think about bringing that knee up and out, up and out. Now, no one looks cool doing it. You're gonna bring your knee from the outside to the inside. Working your hip joint. Ooh. Working that fluid, that blood flow. Three, two, last one this side. Last one this side, awesome. Last thing we're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna have you, if you've got a chair in your office, that's great. If you don't have a chair in your office, um, you can grab onto a counter or anything else where you can extend your arm. And I just want you to extend back. Just like if you were watching a cat or a dog do a stretch. And as comfortably as you can, now go ahead and step forward with one leg. And you're just going to lightly get a nice warming up, stretching this hip. You're just up light. And then you're going to take that heel up and back on the ground. When our bodies get very stressed out, when we're adrenalized, our calves actually start to tighten. Because when we're in fight or flight, we have to flee or we have to fight. And our legs require a lot of energy. Okay, bring it up. Stretch it down again. And step forward with the other leg. And again, nice and light. So you're just slightly extending that back hip up and down, up and down. Four, three, two, one. Now, roll up to your toes and down with your heel. Um, I worked at a gifted kids school and those kids, a lot of them were very, very stressed and their bodies were wound very tightly. A lot of them had very tight calf muscles. And when you are in a period of angst, calves, they get tight. Legs get tight. All right, shake it out. See if there's anything else on your body that needs stretch, that needs air. Lift your arms up. 
stretch it back, lift your arms up, stretch it back, and balance. Last one. I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for keeping me motivated and keeping me moving uh, during this time. See you soon.